Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Embrace Church. It's Pentecost Sunday, which is an exciting day to worship together. Thank you all for joining us. I invite you to stand. Let's sing together. Let's praise the Lord on this gorgeous morning. shaking let hearts awaken our god is moving forever changing us there is a trembling there is revival the sound of worship so great and glorious your presence like a rushing wind send your spirit here breath of heaven breathe on us breath of heaven breathe on us there is a shaking let hearts awaken our God is moving Forever changing us. There is a trembling, there is revival, the sound of worship, so great and glorious. Holy Spirit, hear us now. Breathe on us, holy fire fall. Come and fill this place with your presence. Rushing wind, send your spirit here. Breath of heaven, breathe on us. Breath of heaven, breathe on us. But come, breathe on us. But come, breathe on us. Shout, the Lord is with us now. Lift up your voice and sing, He is holy. Lift up your hands and shout, the Lord is with us now. Lift up your voice and sing, He is holy. Lift up your hands and shout, the Lord is with us now. Lift up your voice and sing, He is holy. Lift up your hands and shout, the Lord is with us place with your presence like a rushing wind send your spirit here breath of heaven breathe on us come and breathe on us holy fire fall come and fill this place with your presence like a rushing wind send your spirit here
step out of the shadows, step out of the grave, break into the wild, and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces, graces waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted, graces waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord standing just for a moment here. We, we're changing things up a bit today, and we're going to do communion a little early today, so not to throw y'all off a little bit, but as you can see, we have our red banners, and y'all probably know this, many of you, that today is uh, the day that we celebrate Pentecost, and Pentecost is the day where we just remember and we celebrate the wonderful gift of God's Spirit that was poured out upon all people um, a couple thousand years ago, and so 
This morning, we're going to do a special uh, Pentecost communion liturgy together, and we're going to share it together a little bit earlier in the service because we've got something uh, else planned for later on. And so um, if y'all have a communion cup, y'all can go ahead and get that out. Um, If you're visiting with us, you're more than welcome to share communion with us, even if you're not part of our faith community. Um, This is a time where we really just experience and reflect on Christ and what he means to us um, in our life together. We're going to pray a prayer together. And it's going to be on the screen behind me, the parts in yellow, you all will say, um, and I'll lead us in the parts in white. So join with me. Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, at the beginning of time you moved over the face of the waters, you gave every living thing the breath of life. Come, creator spirit, and renew the whole creation. Holy Spirit, voice of the prophets, you inflame men and women with a passion for your truth, and through them you call your people to the ways of justice and compassion. Come, Spirit of righteousness, and burn in our hearts. Holy Spirit, Spirit of Jesus, by your power Jesus came to bring good news to the poor and release to those held captive. Come, liberating spirit, and free us from the powers of sin and death. Holy Spirit, advocate, teacher, you speak to us of our Lord and show us the depths of his love. Come, spirit of truth, abide in us and lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, wind and flame, you fill disciples with joy and courage, empowering them to preach your word and to share your good news. Come, Spirit of power, make us bold witnesses of your redeeming love. Holy Spirit, Spirit of peace, you break down barriers of language, race, and culture and heal the divisions that separate us. Come, reconciling Spirit, and unite us all in the love of Christ. Holy Spirit, Lord, and giver of life, At the close of the age, all creation will be renewed to sing your praises. Come, Creator Spirit, and make us new creations in Jesus Christ. Amen. If y'all could bow your heads, I'll say another prayer for us. Lord, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood and empowered by the gifts of the Spirit. By Your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit in Your holy church, all honor and glory is Yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. If y'all would like to share communion all together now, we can do that. I invite you to take and eat. It's the body of Christ broken for you. And I invite you to take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. I encourage you, just as we sing this sect song to reflect on God's Spirit and that spiritual presence that is with us today through these common things of just juice and a wafer, but God, Spirit, we believe is alive in us as we do this and share this meal together each week. And so we're going to continue to worship, um, and so I encourage y'all just to remain standing and to continue to connect with God in whatever way that works for you. Father, all of heaven 
roars your name sing louder let this place erupt with praise can you hear it the sound of heaven touching earth the sound of heaven touching earth our father all of heaven roars your name sing louder let this place erupt with praise can you hear it the sound of heaven touching earth the sound of heaven touching earth spirit break out break our walls down spirit break out heaven come down spirit break I can go ahead and have a seat. What we're going to do now is, is something that we started doing year, a couple of years ago at the beginning of the pandemic. It's a time that we really enjoyed sharing together online as we were kind of doing the online church for, for a while, um, and it was just a time of sharing. And we started out calling it our praise and protest. We also call it sharing our gratitude and lament. But basically what I want you all to do is just take some time to turn to maybe three or four people around you. If you need to slide a little bit, see someone that's on their own, maybe... Uh, 
invite them over to join your, your little group. And make sure you introduce yourself, share who you are. And then also, if you have something you're grateful for today, something that you feel like praising God for, just something going on in your life that you just feel gratitude for, then you can share that. And then also, if you have a lament or a protest this morning, I'd love for you all to share that as well. You know, we, we acknowledge that we're living in this tension right now where, you know, in many ways we see, um, we see a lot of good things. We see progress. We see uh, peace. We see goodness in our community. And we see things that are happening that are really good that we want to be grateful for in our lives and all around us. But we also see so much suffering and pain and hardship and injustice that continues to linger. And, and in many ways we're li living in this tragic gap, as Parker Palmer talks about, that gap between the world as we know as it should be um, and what we really believe that we're in, what we're working towards in the world that we live in now, right? And, and we're kind of in this tension. And so we want to sit in that tension when we're together and be willing to acknowledge both the, the good things and also the difficult things. And so uh, just take a few moments to share with one another. And those of you online, uh, y'all can share with each other there as well. And uh, if you don't know what to say after someone shares, just thank them for sharing. That's a great way to, to respond to someone. But let's uh, just turn to little groups of four, three or four or five people. That'd be great. And we can do that right now. So I'll call you back together in just a moment.
Uh, if y'all want to take maybe a minute or so, and so if somebody hasn't had an opportunity to share anything, continue to move along. I'll call us back in just a second. All right, if y'all want to bring it back this way, uh, that would be awesome. Well, my name is John Gallagher. I think I know most of you, but I may not know all of you. I'm the lead pastor here at the church. I just want to say welcome to each and every one of you that are here today. Um, If we have any visitors, I want to say a, a special welcome to you. So glad that you're here. If you have any questions or want to know more about our church, Um, anything. I just want to meet with the pastor and learn more. Uh, We'd be happy to to do that. Just let us know. Um, I have a few quick things I just want to share with you today, um, announcements-wise. First off, in your pews, there are Connect cards. They're very bright and beautiful now, and these are great. This is a great way to communicate with us if y'all need something. Um, Often, it's hard after church to talk to everybody, and we often forget things after church as well. So this is a great way for y'all to communicate Um, I love when you all fill these out, even if you're just here for a Sunday, Um, but there's a spot on the back to put prayer requests if you need prayer. Uh, We have a prayer team who's lifting up these requests each and every week. Um, You can put these in that box over there by the door or in the back, just fold it in half, stick it in there, and if you have anything you'd like to reach out to us about, there's some boxes you can check there. If those boxes don't apply to what you want, uh, just write it there in the prayer request, and uh, we will get in touch with you. There's also giving envelopes in your pews as well. If you'd like to support what we're doing here at the church, then you can do that as well with those. Uh, No pressure on that, just an invitation. If you feel God leading you to support our work here, then you can do that there and also online at embraceyourcity.com slash give. Also, um, we have, uh, let me see, we have a couple other things. We have a prayer email as well, prayer at embraceyourcity.com. You can also email that to request prayer. Um, hopefully you grabbed an announcement sheet when you came in. There's always really good stuff. We update these every single week, so I encourage you to read through those. I just want to remind you all of a couple of things um, and highlight some stuff that's on that list. Um, first off, tomorrow, we have, normally have the gathering every Monday night. It's our Monday kind of outreach and service and meal, a lot of things that we do on Mondays. And so we're not going to do any of our Monday activities tomorrow. Um, All the pastors are going to be gone tomorrow. We all have different things that we are doing. I'm going to our annual conference for the United Methodist Church, and Christina is going to be at camp. And so we're going to have, and Rick, uh, one of our other volunteer pastors, is just had surgery, and so he won't be able to be there as well. And so we have to cancel tomorrow night. We usually cancel once during the summer anyway, so we're going to make that our night that we cancel the gathering. And so um, there won't be anything going on here tomorrow, actually. The office is actually going to be closed tomorrow as well because we're transporting lots of kids down to camp tomorrow. And so just letting you know, if you need something tomorrow, uh, the church will not be very available to you. Uh, but you can email, and uh, we will get in touch with you. Um, also, we uh, have our Bible study class. So if you all remember, at the beginning of the year, we announced that we're going to do three different parts to kind of a Bible study series, and so the first was we read a book, and it was called How the Bible Actually Works, and we got together and discussed it. It sparked and provoked really good conversation in that group, and we had a really, probably had 30, 40 people who were actively participating in that, either online or in person. It was a really awesome time together. Um, We are going to do another uh, Bible study that's going to start this coming Sunday, and it's going to be a three-part series focusing on more on history. And so we're going to look at three different kind of pieces throughout Christian history. We're going to start with kind of the early church, and some of that will be focused on kind of the formation of the Bible and kind of what was going on in the very first kind of decades of of the Christian church. And so um, that will be very interesting, I'm sure. And so Jackie J is going to be leading that class. And then the next week, we're going to be looking at the time of Reformation, 
um, which, was, which was a very influential moment in Christian history and kind of some different ideas about how to look at Scripture and interpret the Bible. And Julie Duff, who is back here, uh, is going to be leading that. She knows so much about history, and we're so excited. And then the next week, we're going to be looking at kind of the Wesleyan kind of way of looking at Scripture and, and our faith. Um, we come from the Wesleyan tradition that was kind of started with John Wesley, um, who you know, kind of sparked this kind of reformation within the uh, Church of England, and we are really excited about that. Dustin Pugel is going to be leading that class, and so I encourage you all to really uh, consider coming to it. Do we have a sign-up sheet this morning? We do, and so at the tables, there's a sign-up sheet. I would love for you to sign up because we're going to also put it on Zoom, and so you can come and listen to it on Zoom. This will not be a discussion-based class. This will be more like uh, just receiving information. And so if you are a person who processes that way and doesn't like the whole discussion thing, this is for you. Um, and so you'll be able to watch it on Zoom as well and participate that way as well. And so we want to be able to send you the links and all that kind of stuff. So please sign up um, if you're going to come. And you can come to any of them. You can come to all of them. It doesn't matter if you come to all three. If you miss it, then we'll hopefully have some recordings for you so you can go and watch them later. And then also I want to tell you that we told you this week, but we are going to offer the Wonder Room for our children throughout the summer, through June and July. It will not be happening in August, but it will be in June and July on every week except the first Sunday of the month. And so we're really excited about that. We've not been able to offer it over the summer for quite some time, but our volunteers were just ready and willing to continue on and jump in. So we're so grateful for their willingness to do that. And I think that's all the things I'm going to say, um, but Katie who goes to church here and also um, works at Common Good, is going to share about an important need that they have at Common Good for this summer. Okay, let's give her a hand. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good morning. Um, like John said, I'm here because Common Good is in need of mentors for our summer program. Um, so we're an uh, after-school program and summer program that's in the basement here at Embrace. And we're looking for mentors for our elementary program, which is kindergarten to fifth grade. And our summer program starts uh, June 13th, and it runs for six weeks. So we're looking for mentors um, who could commit to one afternoon a week. So it'd be like six afternoons total. Um, and it's Monday through Thursday from 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, and our greatest need right now is on Thursdays. Um, and our summer program is really, really fun. I highly recommend anyone who's interested to talk more to me um, about it. But it's really fun. We go to the pool. We play games. Um, we go bowling. We go skating. It's really, really fun. And um, if you're interested, we also have a sign-up sheet that looks very similar to the sign-up sheet um, for the Bible class. So don't get them confused. But it's on the tables as well. And then I also will be standing in the back if you want to talk to me after church. Um, to just get more information about it. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. I also mentor on Thursdays, so if y'all want to come hang out with me, I would love to see you. It's, it's my favorite day of the week when I get to mentor at Common Good. And they, they have a really high need. Since the pandemic, it has actually been really hard to find mentors. Um, I'm not sure why. Everybody's having a hard time with everything since the pandemic. And so um, if you all could make it work, um, that would be very, very helpful. Um, our worship team is going to come up, and they're going to lead us in a song before uh, we share a little bit more, bit more with you. Do we have anyone in the room that has made a candle? I'm looking kind of back in that section. Are there any candles back there for the children? Well, if you made a candle, this is a good song to hold it up into the sky. Show it off a little bit. This is, uh, this is a song we've, you've heard before here. It's uh, called One, and it was written by a team of folks from this church, and we thought it fit well for Pentecost Sunday, um, having to do with the, the Holy Spirit, the fire, and uh, there's something about a flame, something about a candle that brings people together. You know, I'm thinking of campfires. I'm thinking of, you know, how we do at Advent services or Christmas Eve where you spread the light around, and it, uh, you know, it's small in some ways, you can hold it in your hand, but then it can also just light up a whole room, light up the whole world. So sing along if you know this. The 
eternity in harmony before the dawn of time. One breath together breathe chaos into life. From dust you lifted us to communion by your side. Unity of body, heart, and mind. You made us one. One. The choice and trust into our hands. We chose a stance of pride. And broken communion then became our way of life and brother hating brother we've drawn our battle lines well, father heal our divides and make us one So the world will know your love Just as the Father, Spirit, Son Distinct in their being, sing as one And though we are many, if we're a body will make us one One To open your arms wide and No great restoring one With wounded hands inside Will make us a family reconciled Will make us one So the world will know your love Just as the Father, Spirit, Son Distinct in the being, sing as one Though we are many, if we're a body
feel all the pain that we have caused. And so the world will know your love, just as the Father, Spirit, Son, distinct in the being, sing as one. Though we are many, if we're a body, will make us one. bow your heads. I just want to say a prayer for us. Maybe you just can take a moment um, just to be quiet and be still. Perhaps you just want to take a few deep breaths. Be reminded of God's spirit that is giving life to us each and every moment of our day. I imagine many of us came here with anxieties and stress, sadness, anger, feelings of being overwhelmed and afraid. And some of us may be experiencing rage and just really intense feeling and emotion this morning. I encourage you just to take all that to God now and bring your full self to this space and to this time that we get to share. Perhaps there's things you want to try to release and let go of now in this moment. Lord, we gather together today in this moment. First, we just want to ask for your presence to be alive here in this space, in our hearts, in our bodies. We invite you, Lord, to fill us up and do with us, Lord, what you desire. and Lead us in the direction that you want to lead us. Pray that we could be more aware of your spirit and your presence here in this space today. Lord, many of us came uh, here, maybe not so sure why we're here. Some of us came with great expectations of maybe experiencing you in a fresh way. Many of us came just hoping and needing to experience the power of your presence. Because maybe we don't feel very powerful right now. God, regardless of of what we have brought, Lord, I just pray you would meet us where we're at, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would inspire us, that you would empower us, that you would help us to leave here, Lord, feeling different. Lord, my prayer is that we leave here looking more like Jesus, that we leave here being people that are more full of love for one another and for you. I just pray that we leave here changed because we've encountered you, Lord, the living God. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to have eyes to see and ears to hear the word that you have for us this morning. Lord, we need you and we just thank you that you are here among us. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I am, I've been really excited about this service for a few weeks now, and one of the reasons I'm excited is because um, we've got a little update to give about our immigration clinic that we have up on our second floor at Embrace. Um, many of you all may remember probably a couple, two and a half years ago when we kind of launched uh, this new initiative in partnership with some folks from church, but also some folks from the community. Um, as far as folks who live even in Louisville, uh, it was quite the community who came together to get this new initiative started. But Neighbors Immigration Clinic provides affordable, um, low-cost legal services for immigrants here in particularly in central Kentucky and, and even beyond, beyond in eastern Kentucky as well, and, and even in northern Kentucky now also. And so it's a, it's a wonderful um, thing that we have going, and, and I was really just excited to get this thing going, and we launched right at the beginning of the pandemic, which is a really hard time to start a nonprofit. And it is, um, it's, been, it's been a challenge, but there has been a lot of just wonderful fruit already. You may remember that Sarah Adkins, who was a part of our church, who is now moving up to northern Kentucky, um, worked with some other folks here at this church to help launch this and was our first executive director and also did some of the legal work and really built a good foundation for us. And now um, she moved on at the end of last year, and we've been in a few months of transition, trying to figure out what's next, hire some new folks, created a new structure where we now have two full-time people uh, help leading. We have an executive director and a legal director. And so the executive director is in charge of visioning and really helping oversee the bigger picture and making sure that the organization is healthy and, and moving in the right direction. And the legal director is responsible for kind of overseeing um, just the, the legal side of things and seeing clients and really is really doing things really at the heart of what the mission of Neighbors Immigration Clinic is all about. And so we're really excited because we posted those jobs. It took a little while to get some good candidates and interview folks. And finally, we are fully staffed, and we're really excited about it, and we're just pumped about the future and, and what we can really do together um, with, with neighbors and our partnership with the church and, and with the broader community as well. And so we have a special guest this morning. Our new executive director is named Jesus Abanez. And so I'm going to invite Jesus to come on up. Let's give him a hand. As he comes to the front. A few months ago, we hired our legal director, and her name is Sophia, and she has hit the ground running and just really uh, doing an awesome job so far. And Jesus has been with us for just a few weeks now, still trying to wrap his head around all this stuff because it's really hard to jump into a brand new thing. Um, but we've had a lot of conversation recently, um, just visioning together and thinking about just what we could get involved in, some trouble we can get into in our community to really come alongside our immigrant neighbor, neighbors to provide a community uh, of hospitality and love and welcome um, to our immigrant neighbors because um, that, that is at the heart of our faith as Christians and ultimately this is what we ought to be focused on as, as just humans uh, because um, we, are, we are better off together and I do believe that, you know, this idea, I love this African concept of Ubuntu. It's this idea that I am because you are, that you are because I am, that we are all interconnected, and when one person is suffering, we are all suffering. And so uh, we've got to be paying special attention to those who have not been welcomed and those who have not been empowered and, and shown the dignity and value that they, they deserve, uh, that inherent value that all of us have, because we believe as Christians that all of us are created in the image of God, right? We all bear that, that mark within us, and and so Jesus has got some wonderful ideas and, and already of how we can better do that together um, as a community here. And so I'm going to turn it over to Jesus, and he's going to share just a little bit um, with you all this morning about himself and about neighbors, and, uh, and then I'm going to share a little bit as well um, after he's done. Good morning, everybody. As uh, John said, my name is uh, Jesus Ibanez, which I know can be a little bit difficult to pronounce if you don't speak Spanish. So if you have trouble saying my name, you can always call me by my nickname. It's Huisilo <laughs> Potsli. That joke sells every single time. I think I might have missed my calling. 
So I, I know uh, today is a special day, and some of you uh, are here to hear the pastor's sermon. So uh, I'll keep my speech, my, my words, short and sweet, just like me. So, so there are uh, a few things you should know about me. Uh, first of all, I was born and raised in California for the most part. Uh, shortly after uh, being born, my, excuse me, my family moved back to uh, Mexico and um, eventually returned to the U.S. Actually, some of my first memories are crossing uh, the U.S.-Mexico border with my undocumented mother and my undocumented brother. And uh, Spanish is my first language. So growing up in a mixed status family really opened my eyes. I, I could not understand as a child why somebody who looked like me, my brother, my mother, were experiencing things that did not, uh, did not affect me, right? That struggle with things that I did not struggle because I had the privilege of U.S. citizenship. And that was very formative. It planted a seed in me. Because of their struggles, I decided that I wanted to change the system so nobody would struggle the way they had struggled. So nobody would struggle the way we had struggled as a mixed status family. Another thing you should know about me is that I always root for the underdog. And that's what Neighbors is. It's the underdog. It's the new kid on the block. When people ask me, why would you move from California to Lexington to work for Neighbors? Well, Neighbors, it's a very magnetic, it's a very attractive organization for several reasons. Thanks to our incredible legal director, Sofia Calleja, Neighbors has transitioned to a new organizational model. Neighbors is turning a new leaf. It, always, it has been doing incredible work, and it's going to continue to do even more incredible work. Neighbors is the only immigration legal services organization in central Kentucky, and quite possibly the entire state of Kentucky, that is wholly staffed and led by brown people who have been directly impacted by the U.S. immigration system. That is incredible. That is, it gives me so much pride and so much, so much honor. It's a privilege to work with such an organization. But at the same time, it's unfortunate that we are the first and that we are the only one. No longer is it okay for organizations to do immigration legal services, not to have in leadership positions individuals who have been impacted by issues. It's no longer okay. Other organizations should take neighbors' lead. A third thing you should know about me is that while I'm new to Lexington, I'm not new to Kentucky. I actually lived about six years in uh, Louisville. I went to law school at the University of Louisville. So please don't hold that against me. <laughs> My years in Louisville were very formative. Yes, I built a foundation in activism in California. But organizing in Louisville and in Kentucky is very different. I was involved in a lot of movement spaces. I was involved with organize, uh, organizers and organizations who call themselves black liberationists prison abolitionists, individuals and organizations that advocated against the school-to-prison pipeline, and of course, individuals that advocated against the deportation machine. And thanks to that advocacy with those organizers, Louisville became the first sanctuary jurisdiction in the state of Kentucky. And to my understanding, it's still the only sanctuary jurisdiction 
in the commonwealth. We also revolutionized immigration advocacy by implementing nonviolent direct action. We showcase this action in summer 2018 through this movement called Abolish ICE. That, the, the strategy we used had never been seen in Louisville. It was really incredible to see different organizations, different individuals, faith-based organizations come together with people who call themselves anarchists, socialists, and undocumented people to try to effectuate change and bring attention to issues that were affecting those individuals. It is my hope and it is my dream to bring that knowledge and that experience to neighbors so that neighbors can expand its services to include more than just legal services. Imagine, if you will, a neighbors that does political advocacy, a neighbors that does community organizing, a neighbors that does leadership development, and the neighbors that, of course, does nonviolent direct action. Wow, what an incredible dream, right? Some of you might be excited by what I just said. Some of you might be a little bit hesitant or scared, and both those points of view are valid. To those of you who are asking, how do I get involved in this new neighbors. Well, to be honest, our biggest need right now is financial solidarity. Neighbors, for the most part, is funded by donors, such as y'all. And I have to acknowledge there are some people here today who donated to neighbors in the past and continue to donate to neighbors. But we're always looking for new donors. One-time donors, monthly donors, all donors are welcome. It is our hope that in the near future, there will be a volunteer opportunities for individuals to translate, to interpret, to give rides, and other forms of volunteerism. And if you're still unsure how you can be part of this new neighbors, come talk to me. I am on the second floor, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. I would love to talk to you about how you can fit in into this new neighbor. And I'll also be here, I'll be here after the services if y'all want to talk one-on-one -on -one as well. Uh, before I uh, end this talk, I want to lead you all in a chant. Uh, some of you may be familiar with this chant. It's called the Si Se Puede chant, which was made famous by the United Farm Workers of the 1960s and 70s, which you can see on my shirt, the UFW. Um, some of you probably haven't heard of it. And for those of you who haven't heard of it, uh, you're in luck because you're about to learn some Spanish today. So I start off by asking, se puede, which is, can we, or is it possible? And you all reply with, si se puede, which is, yes, we can, or yes, it's possible. Are you all ready? Awesome, awesome. So, se puede? Se puede? Se puede? It feels good to be back in Kentucky. I'm excited about the future. Thank you. Jesus asked me this week, he said, I have a question for you. Can I lead a chant on Sunday? <laughs> And I said, of course you can. <laughs> Absolutely, you can lead a chant. Um, thank you, Jesus, for sharing your heart with us this morning. I look forward to continuing to work together um, in the upcoming months and years ahead. And I'm sure that there will be lots of opportunities to, to get together and conspire together on how we can make an impact in our community. And we will welcome Jesus' knowledge of organizing as well as he brings that to neighbors um, he's going to be an executive director that also has a passion for activism and organizing, which I'm very, very excited about. We talk about it at our church, you know, sometimes churches can be really good at kind of meeting basic needs and responding to crises and, and 
and helping address problems as they arise, but, but churches are not usually very good at asking the deeper question of why are these problems happening in the first place, you know? And I've shared with you that image of like, you know, you can imagine a, a river and you, you see bodies just flowing down the river and, and you're like, oh, people are drowning, I need to help them. And so you go and you try to pull people out of the river and save them. And, and maybe you can save one or two, but then they just keep on coming and they start to add up, and then, and then you're missing people because you can't, you don't have enough people, and then you're like, let's keep saving people, and, and no one really often has the sense to ask, okay, well, why are they in the river in the first place? Maybe we need to go upstream, and we need to find out who's throwing them in the river, and, and why they're in the river, and we need to do the work to, to make those changes, and so when he talks about policy change and political activism, this is the kind of work we're talking about. It's, it's dealing with root causes and really trying to make more systemic, long-lasting change, so we're not just putting out fires all the time. And so I'm really excited about the opportunity to learn and follow uh, their lead, because I, I think that we will do well um, to follow the lead of our, our new leadership at Neighbors as we continue to ask the hard questions and ask how we can continue to follow what we believe as a church is, is Jesus' is calling to, to come alongside others in solidarity who, who need kind of advocates and people to come alongside them in their journey uh, towards, towards finding wholeness in their lives. And so thank you, Jesus, for sharing with us today. So as I've already said, today is Pentecost Sunday. Um, the traditional color for Pentecost is red, which is supposed to point to the flame uh, fire because that's often an image used uh, when we talk about God's spirit. Um, we are a United Methodist Church, and as you can see, the, our, our symbol is the cross and the flame, and the flame is supposed to symbolize God's spirit, that fire uh, that burns within us. This is the day that we remember the incredible gift of God's spirit, and it is an incredible gift. We believe that this is the same spirit that was with God at the beginning when the earth was created. We read that the spirit hovered over the waters. This is the same spirit that brought Pharaoh to his knees and led the Israelites to freedom from slavery in Egypt. This is the same Spirit that guided them through the wilderness for 40 years. This is the same Spirit that empowered prophets to speak truth to power and call people to repentance and to love and to justice. This is the same Spirit that consumed Jesus and drove Him to fiercely love the hurting and the oppressed and the overlooked. This is the same Spirit that gave Jesus the courage He needed, the the inner fortitude He needed to endure the cross, and the power to overcome death through His resurrection. And as Christians, we believe that that same Spirit has been poured out upon all flesh, has been given to us, and now lives within us. Pentecost is that day when the Spirit was poured out on everyone that was there. Uh, Felice has described this as a beautiful redistribution of power. It, it is The Spirit was then given to all who were there. Many of Jesus' followers were there in Jerusalem on that day, roughly 2,000 years ago in the ancient Near East. And they were there in Jerusalem, and the Holy Spirit descended upon them it filled them up for them to preach the gospel and carry on the mission of Jesus in their community. And as you read through the book of Acts, which comes after Jesus had died, he rose, and then he ascended into heaven. You know, they, they were on their own at this point. And you start to see as you read through Acts, which tells the story of the very first Christians, you see them start to show this courage. And I always wonder, where did this courage come from? They were boldly speaking truth, God's truth, in very public places. Peter, immediately after he is filled up with the Spirit, just stands up in front of this entire group of people and just starts boldly proclaiming the truth that God had put in his heart. You start to see the the followers of Jesus get in trouble, showing courage, even giving their lives for the movement. You see them making sacrifices for each other, sharing their resources. Some even sold homes and would give their money to the community. Our text for today is in chapter 2, which we'll read in a moment. And and we only have to go to 
two chapters later to chapter 4. And we see Peter and John being hauled in in front of the authorities, being questioned and interrogated. In the next chapter, many more are arrested and they are abused and they are flogged. Then in the next two chapters, we read about Stephen who was arrested and who was stoned to death by the authorities. And the pattern just continues. They have this courageous kind of public action and speaking and, and, and reaching out and touching people and healing them. And then you see them getting into great trouble with the authorities. And it just keeps happening over and over and over again. Then we get all the way to chapter 17. They were in a place called Thessalonica. And some folks there were furious that Paul and Silas had shown up to their town because they had heard rumors about Paul and about Silas and the rest of their crew. And here's what they said. They complained that these people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also. And they didn't want them there. They said, and Jason, this other guy, he's entertaining them as guests. He says, they are all acting contrary to the decrees of our emperor, saying that there is another king named Jesus. What a transformation that they went through. These followers of Jesus who were once scared to death. I mean, after Jesus died, they were hiding out in a locked room of a safe house in Jerusalem. And it didn't take long for them to find the courage within to take their ministry and message to the streets, proclaiming that another world is indeed possible. And this transformation inspires me. Um, it inspires me. I've shared this with you before, but I've always been someone who struggles with fear and has struggled to kind of step forward when I know I need to, if it's going to be hard, if it's going to be risky. And I'm so inspired by their courage and their willingness to do something that caused so much trouble for them and for many others. What caused this change? Where did they find that courage? I want to just read the text for today for you. It comes from Acts chapter 2. I'm going to read 21 verses. And this is the story of Pentecost. So it says, when the day of Pentecost came, this was a Jewish festival that they were celebrating, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all those speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, and Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, and Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and all the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. They said, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they ask each other, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have just had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven. He raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken, spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven and above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke, the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls 
on the name of the Lord will be saved. At the beginning of this passage, we read, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. So all the disciples and some others were there in one place. And when you look back at chapter 1, you see that they were in Jerusalem in the upper room of a home. This is likely the same upper room where they were hiding out just before Jesus' execution and then after his execution. We often miss this part of the story, but you have to imagine that the disciples were in a very risky situation. They were likely fugitives. There were likely authorities looking for them. Their, their leader, Jesus, had just been arrested and executed for crimes against the state. They were probably coming after the followers as well. You can imagine this upper room more like a safe house attic where they hid from the authorities since they were so closely associated with the criminal executed Jesus. In the upper room was likely a mixture of people. It would have been men and women and children praying together as they waited for the gift that Jesus had promised them. I imagine they were feeling a lot of emotions in that moment. Great expectation of the gift. Fear of the authorities. Sadness that Jesus had left them. Shame maybe over the ways they had let Him down. And as they prayed, it says the Spirit filled them. It rested upon them like fire. And they immediately left their private home and they took this boundary-breaking message of the Gospel out into the public. This part of the story is very strange because it starts in this room and it's like almost magically they're out in the streets and all the people are there. It's like it just immediately, as soon as they received the Spirit, they had to take it out of the home, out into the streets. These scared fugitive disciples were transformed into bold witnesses for Jesus. You know, it wasn't until last year that I actually considered that this story began in the privacy and safety of this home, this safe house attic, but the Spirit empowered them, and then all of a sudden they had the courage to take the message of Jesus out into the public. They refused to give up. They backed down, never backed down, and they did not lose hope as they carried the boundary-breaking and liberating gospel of Jesus throughout their community. This reminds me uh, of a lot of people throughout history. More recently, it reminds me of these students, um, the Parkland students, if y'all remember, who have the courage to courageously go out and take a public stand against gun violence, even as they've been vilified and demonized and harassed by, you know, grown adults. Uh, attacking them over their stand against gun violence. It reminds me of all the the folks involved in the freedom movement back during the time, Martin Luther King and John Lewis and the members of SNCC and so many others who stepped out of their churches and out into the streets and walked in places where they were told that they couldn't. Jesus mentioned just a few minutes ago um, Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta in their bold public declaration, si se puede, in the face of harsh oppression of farm workers in the U.S. It reminds me of the Palestinian Christians and Muslims who are taking to the streets to non-violently protest the occupation of their land. It reminds me of these Christian peacemaker teams who went to Baghdad during the shock and awe campaign in 2003 to stand in solidarity with the Iraqis and protest the war. It reminds me of Countless moms of young people killed by police violence who are leading marches and pressuring city councils for policy change and working to end gun violence and police brutality. It reminds me of a hero of mine, Oscar Romero, who decided he had to pick a side and he stood in solidarity with the victims of violence and oppression in El Salvador. There's so many other examples we could come up with of people who had the courage to take their private faith and allow it to not just be something that they hold inside, but it led them and drove them out into the public to come alongside people and work for God's freedom and justice in this world. You know, we sang songs today about revival. Um, People talk about revival a lot. It's a very um, important thing to talk about. I've heard time and time again people say that we need revival in our nation. We 
need revival in our churches. People are praying for a new Pentecost, for a fresh outpouring of God's Spirit in our communities. And I agree that we do need a new Pentecost. We do need revival. We need a fresh outpouring of God's Spirit. But revival, you need to understand, revival is way more than just passionate singing or fervent prayer or more talking about Jesus. True Spirit-filled revival must lead to action. The Spirit has a mission. And the Spirit's mission is to carry on the mission of Jesus. And so if you want to know what the Spirit is all about, you need to read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and not, not just read about Jesus, but look and see what He did, what He said, what He taught, how He lived His life. Look and see how people responded to Jesus. The Spirit's job is to continue on the ministry and mission of Jesus in this world. And so true Spirit-filled revival ought to make us look and act and become more like Him. Jesus is healing and freedom, liberation, justice, and love. This is what revival ought to lead us to. And here's my thought about all this, that true revival will not just make us more spiritual, but will drive us actually outside of our church, out into the community, to join up with others, to see God's work be done here in this world. You know, you've heard this morning from two of our, our, our main two partner organizations that we have here in our space, Common Good, who has our whole basement, and the neighbors who's up in our top floor in our building. And I think joining up with them initially through financial solidarity of Jesus Ask for Help With, through mentoring at Common Good and volunteering there, those are a good step. <laughs> if you're wondering how you might join up with God's Spirit and the Spirit's work to create a more loving and just and equitable community. You know, Pentecost is often called the birthday of the church because it's really that moment when, when they decided we're going to stand up and be the people that God has called us to be. And every year at Pentecost, we have the opportunity to look back at the previous year and kind of dream together of what our future can look like together in community. Birthdays are our perfect time for taking stock of our lives. Jesus and I were talking this past week, and he said he likes the beginning of the month because the beginning of the month is a time to think differently and to try to start over, right? Birthdays are similar. It's a time every year to ask those questions about where we've been and where we're going to go. And so as a church, as a community, we have an opportunity to do that every year on Pentecost. And so we need to think, how, who do we want to be? What path do we want to go down? And so what we're going to do to end our time together today is we're going to just reflect um, individually, and I want y'all to, to just use, just ask God and really think about how you might answer a couple of questions that we're going to put on the screen. So you can go ahead and put those up, Jeremy, and they're right here. And the first question is, how would you like to see the Spirit move in a fresh way in our next year together as a church? So as you think about, how, what would you like to see happen? What is God putting on your heart this morning? How would you like to see the Spirit move in a fresh way in our next year together as a church community? And then the second question is similar, but a bit broader. Because we don't just have to think about right here, but, but we're really called to get outside of just our community. So how would you like to see the Spirit move in the next year in our community in Lexington and beyond? And what you're going to do is you hopefully grabbed a piece of paper as you came in. There's these little red, yellow, or orange piece of paper. If you don't have one, um, I've got some up here that I can, I'll put up here in the front and I can bring them to you. But what we're going to do is you're going to write down on that piece of paper just some of your dreams, some of your hopes, some of your visions. And there's some pens in your pews. And once you're done writing that down, um, we're going to take a few minutes just to do that. I'm going to move this cross down to the front here. and We're going to have some clips. And basically you're just going to take uh, your little piece of paper and you're just going to take it and you're going to clip it to a string, and you can pick lots of different strings. And before you know it, as we get a lot of these on here, the yellow and the orange and the red will start to look like fire, and all of our hopes and dreams will be like fire consuming this cross here as a visual for us to think about how we, as a church, um, can really allow the Spirit to work through us to live into some of these dreams that God is placing on our heart. And so we're just going to take a few minutes to do that, 
Uh, Christina will be available to help you if you need that, uh, to clip those on the cross. But I just want you to take some time, and then as we sing our final song together, um, y'all can come forward um, and do that during that final song. But we're going to move this thing down here real quick. So I encourage you, just take some moments, uh, reflect. Um, There may be lots of ideas that you have of dreams you may have for our community. Um, But write those down, and then uh, when you feel ready, um, once we start singing that song, then you can bring them up and and clip them up here. We'll have clips up in the front and also extra paper if you need that. Um, No pressure uh, to do this, but I'd love for you to participate if you're willing to um, so that we can really fill this up with lots of hopes and dreams for our community.
For the, the benediction, the sending out today, I want to do something a little different. Just pray this prayer for us this morning. Before I do that, I want to remind you of three things that I want you to do after church. Sign up for the Bible class if you want to do that. Sign up to mentor at Common Good if you can do that. And talk to Jesus before you leave, all right? And, and if you're interested, in, just introduce yourself regardless. And then if you've got some interest in being a part of Neighbors, he can help you figure out how to do that. But receive this prayer this morning. 
God of power, may the boldness of Your Spirit transform us. May the gentleness of Your Spirit lead us. May the gifts of Your Spirit equip us to serve and worship You now and always. Amen. Go in God's peace. We'll see you next time.